All right. Joining me now is Kellen Moosh. <laughs> Kellen Moosh. On. He is a production and marketing coordinator for the Tennessee Smokies, a double A affiliate of the Chicago Cubs. Uh, Kellen, I want to thank you for taking the time to talk to me on One and Done Radio. Thanks, Ryan. I'm excited to be here. Glad to do it. Yeah, man. Now, why don't we kind of talk about you a little bit first before we get into the Smokies? Um, first off, I see you're a Kansas City Royals fan. Um, yeah. How? So how did that, did that um, like any flack? Do you get any flack for that or anything for rooting for a team that's not affiliated with the Cubs? Um, not particularly. Um, I found throughout my life. The Royals don't really bother any other fan base. No yeah. one's really affected by anyone being a Royals fan. Um, but it's still, you know, I can be a Royals fan, still cheer on Cubs prospects. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt me to do that. So, gotcha. I didn't know if anyone in the organization ever gives you like. No, like at all. there's there's a lot of different backgrounds here, but everyone's still still a Smokies fan, even if people have their own team. So. Yeah, I mean, I'm a Tigers fan deep down, and. Uh, both our teams are rebuilding. Um, <laughs> whole division is pretty much. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Now, how long have you been with the Smokies for? Um, this is my second year. You know, nice. uh, how do you like it? I love it. It's a lot of fun. Each day is different in the marketing department. So yeah. you're always on your toes, always ready for something new. What did you do prior? Um, so before the Smokies, I was still in school. Um but I also worked in the Coastal Plain League, which is a collegiate summer ball league. So I spent um, a summer working with the Holly Springs Salamanders um, in North Carolina. So that was just being a general intern, um, did various tasks, started to hone in on marketing as something that interested me. Um, and then came here um, as the last part of my degree and stayed here after last season. So what's it like in Kodak? Um, there's not too much. There's the Smokies <laughs> and, um, there's a few restaurants. There's a Bass Pro Shop. Um, most people, Knoxville's only 20 minutes away. Um, you also have Sevierville and Pigeon Forge, 15, 20 minutes. Um, so it's more, you drive, um, to places, you drive to Kodak for the game. Um, and then you drive, if you're in Kodak, you drive to go get food elsewhere pretty much. So. <laughs> <laughs> one of those small towns that yeah. honestly i never heard of until i re you know reached out to you guys and about yeah. this interview and everything for those that don't know anything about the smokies tell us a little bit about like the kind of the history and everything about them that, that you know okay um so we've been here at smoky stadium in kodak since 2000 um became a cubs affiliate in 2007 previously um they've been affiliated with teams such as the cardinals and the blue jays um, there's a lot of pretty famous baseball personnel that have stopped along at the Smokies. Um, you have Tony La Russa and Joe Girardi um, for manager standpoint. And then players, obviously you have, you know, Cubs like Chris Bryant, Javi Baez and Christopher Morrell last year came straight from double A to Chicago, which was exciting. Um, but with their previous affiliations, you know, Roy Halladay had a stint here as well. So there's, there's some pretty big names that have called, you know, Knoxville and Kodak, the place of home for a double A season. And um, then another thing that um, I think is special about the Smokies, um, you know, we're America's friendliest ballpark, Smoky Stadium. So that's something that we take a lot of pride in and something that, you know, we like to tell people about as well. So what do you mean by friendliest ballpark? Like you, you're not gonna you're not gonna throw a beer at somebody? Well, we can't get <laughs> both fans, but if you if you come to the game, you know, the staff's always gonna have a smile on their face. Always happy to see you. Always happy to have fans here, um, because at the end of the day, it's about the fans, not us. You know, our jobs are for the fans. So, I think being America's friendliest ballpark—that's something that we make sure is put first. I like that. Um, you already touched on it a little bit, but what else is an experience for fans that go to the game? What's it like? Um, it depends which night you come. Um, we like to do a lot with our special promotions. Um, but you can expect, you know, to see some regular things like we'll have, you know, every time we win, we play Go Cubs Go. Um, we have like a certain like smoky specialties that we like to play um, pregame or in game. Um, but, you know, fans can expect to be, you know, called on to maybe be on field for a promotion or on the dugout. Maybe we'll, you know, 
throw them on camera and they have to sing a song or be <laughs> silly with us. Um, we really like to have them immersed in, you know, not just the game, but the experience. Um, it's something that, you know, we want to attract more than just baseball fans. You know, if you're just looking for something to do or something exciting, you know, in Tennessee, um, in East Tennessee, we want people to come to Smokies games as, as that. How far is Nashville? Nashville is about two and a half hours, three hours. Okay. I had a work event last year. I went to Nashville and it's pretty, pretty nice. It was pretty, actually, actually the weather was kind of bad. So what's the weather like in Kodak? Um, I mean, you have your, your mountains surrounding you. So you have, yeah. um, you know, weather's constantly changing. Um, we like to joke that there's a force field around the stadium that, you know, it could say that it's rain and it's, it could rain in the parking lot, but you know, maybe the playing surface isn't going to have any rain. So <laughs> the weather can be unpredictable at times. Um, but once you, once you get into July, it can get, you know, pretty hot. Yeah. Yeah. I, I live down in Florida and uh, it just gets hot and sticky and humid down here. And, and yeah. but I do like, I used to live, I was born in Michigan and then um, <clears throat> I used to live there when I was like a kid. I definitely, I don't miss the four seasons. I don't miss the snow. <laughs> yeah. But I, I definitely miss the nice, like, summer, cooler weather up there compared to the horrible yeah. summers I get down in Florida. Now, I want to talk about, obviously, the hat that I'm wearing today. Yeah. I think this is your guys' home hat, correct? Yes, correct. Gotcha. I think it's a fantastic-looking hat. I I, take, I always take it at work, and um, I always get compliments on it. Ever since yeah, you guys it's a very this. sleek, sleek-looking hat. Oh. Yeah. Um, is there, like, any history with the logo or anything at all? Um, well, I mean, when we first came here, um, obviously, like, you know, as most teams, they just, you know, modernize the logo. So I think it's just been simplified over the years, but, um, not, not to my knowledge that I can speak to a certain extent on, but yeah. Now you guys have, you guys wear this one, you wear a, unless I'm looking at the one, so I'm not sure I got this right. You wear a like, couple alternate ones too. Like, yeah. We have, was, we have a red one as well. Um, that has, I think, has a blue TS script on it, mm -hmm. and then um, for batting practice, they have um, gray, and then the bill is the blue, um, and then we have what we call our batting bear logo. Um, so it's like a full body of that bear that's you know on your head right now, and um, him holding a bat. So that's what we call our batting bear logo. Batting bear, okay. Yep. Yeah, I mean they they all look great. Honestly, yeah. I think I think you can't I really, go wrong. I, really with that. Bear. I think that one's really fun. What's that? The batting bear is my favorite. Yeah, that's a really fun logo. I, that's a really cool logo. Um, but I, I, beautiful hats all around. Now, you kind of touched it a little bit. I want to talk about a little bit more. What are some maybe recent promotions you guys had, or, or maybe some upcoming promotions you guys are going to have for for your games? Okay, so um, this next homestand, we have a free beer night. Um, and then after that, we have, we're doing a game show night. Um, and then we also have a Mother's Day celebration. And then towards the end of this month, we have one of our big ones each year, Margaritaville night. So upcoming the rest of May, those are our big highlights. Um, we're also working on a couple others um, that we haven't yet announced um, for the end of May. But those are the big ones that we have in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. What's the ones... Is it the giveaways that you feel like draws more more fans into the games? Like maybe give away items or or the free beer. I mean, <laughs> I think you can you can draw in anyone for free beer. You don't necessarily have to be a baseball fan for that. Um, but yeah, the, people love a, a good bobblehead, um, especially if you know it's a fun one. Um, you know, something that hasn't necessarily been done before, or if it's a recent player that's played here. Um, you know it's not like a fan can go to Chicago necessarily get a Smokies themed um, bobblehead. So bobbleheads are a big one. Um, people also always love a t-shirt. Um, yeah. I think that goes just, maybe it's American culture. I don't know if it's a worldwide thing, but if you say you're giving out a t-shirt, people, people tend to fill up. <laughs> do you guys have like t-shirt guns that you guys do at the games or anything, or just throw them out there? Um, we typically throw them. Um, okay. We do have a gun. We don't use it that often, but we like to. Um, we have a, a giant slingshot that we like to use too. Oh, um, cool! We use that for hot dogs a lot. We'll throw a hot dog in the slingshot and. <laughs> what? <hot> <laughs> yeah. I've never heard of that before. Yeah. Okay. 
<laughs> that's pretty cool. Um, how many fans show up? Like, well, I mean, it's like the the uh, seating capacity of the stadium. Uh, it's about six and a half thousand. So. Okay. And now the free beer question. Back to the free beer. Is that uh, unlimited free beer, or just like one or something? It, it's until our opponent scores their first run. Whoa! Really? No. So if you have like your ace pitcher on the mound, <laughs> free beer <laughs> night. Oh man. I'd be, I'd be on the line all day. And it's just like one per inning, or you just go back, chug it, and just go back and chug it. I don't so, know. The way it works is um, we have our Smokey's Mason jar. So you have to purchase. First, you have to have your ticket to get in the game. Right. And you would have um, – you would purchase a Smokey's Mason jar, and then that Mason jar is what gets you the free beer. I like it. May, may have to – next time I'm in Tennessee, I'll make a stop there <laughs> for the free beer night. Now, how does this – does Tennessee Smokies, are they involved in like the community or all? How do they give back to the community? Yeah, um, we love giving back to the community. Um, we have volunteered at the Ronald McDonald House in Knoxville. Um, we have also volunteered at the Boys and Girls Club of Knoxville. Um, we host throughout the season. We'll do different drives. Last season, we did a food drive. We also did um, a women's hygiene product drive. Um, so we look for various ways to give back, whether it's front office staff members taking time out of their day and us, you know, going and volunteering on a project or, you know, at the game itself, having a promotion that's like, okay, we're, you know, donate some proceeds to this organization. Um, we like to do a ball toss. So with that, fans can buy like a tennis ball and then post game, we'll have hula hoops set up. And um, if, you know, toss the ball into the hula hoop, you'll win a certain prize and the money made from that could possibly benefit a certain organization. Um, we had a make a wish night last home stand and a ball toss was part of that. So we like to be creative um, with ways, but we definitely are always looking at, you know, how can we better the community? Um, and we recognize that we are a voice in the community and that we are a place that, you know, people see first um, when they think about East Tennessee. I love that. I love giving, I mean, I love giving back to community and being involved. I, yeah. it's so cool. Now, I also love I love minor league baseball. I mean, I love baseball in general, but I think minor league baseball doesn't get like enough credit for what it does. It does produce like you've already touched on Javi Bias, Chris Bryant, just a few of the of the players that have come from minor league yeah. baseball. What do you think personally for you? What do you think like minor league baseball separate like what separates it from like other baseball and like maybe professional, like what you see compared to the professional, like the major game, excuse me. I mean, I think there's multiple perspectives on it. I think you could look at it as major league um, teams are associated with like large cities. So you have, you know, people that will have their pride for their city and there's a large population in most of those cities. So attendance for them is largely based on, okay, we know, we have we are located in a large city so people will come out just because we have a large population but for a lot of minor league teams you know like here in kodak like this is something that people here are proud of this is the smokies are like a representation of this area it's not just oh they're a baseball team like they minor league baseball is a representation of the local city the community um people that have worked at this stadium here like they take pride in that and they take pride in seeing like okay, Javi Baez played here and now he's in Chicago. Like, it's fun to look back and say, this guy is now on the major stage making a difference in the major leagues. But we always know that he started here in Kodak, that he was here in East Tennessee before he moved on. So I think that's something special about minor league baseball is, yeah, these players will get their most attention once they reach the top, but they're still – they're stops along the way. They're having a huge impact on the people that they see. Um, in terms of gameplay itself, I think it's fun because these guys, like, they're trying to hone in on – I think a big thing is, like, their consistency is something that I notice. When these guys become consistent is when they get called up because you'll see flashes, you know, one game a guy can hit two home runs and then two nights later, you know, he's striking out three times. So it's just – it's you see the ups and downs, like, every night to night these players are, you know, they're not just – it's not just for fun for them anymore. It's this is their job. Like they have to prove themselves on the field for the rest of their career. I agree. Now let's have some fun because I like to, I like to have some fun questions on the show. So 
Uh, nice little one. What's your favorite sports movie? Mm. Does not have to be baseball related. That's I'm gonna say, movie. Blind Side. I always have. Blind Side has always held a special place in my heart. I love that movie. Really, I met the actor who played um, the football player, Quentin Michael, Aaron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His he. I used to work at Dick's Sporting Goods, and I was leaving, and I saw everyone was kind of like huddled around somebody. I go, what yeah. is it? And of course, you look, and it's giant. Yeah. And his hand was as big as my head, and like the guy's hand was absolutely massive. Yeah. And I remember someone said, "Oh, that's just the actor." I go. That's awesome. What are you talking about? <laughs> like, just because it wasn't the actual football player. I'm like, that's so cool. So I, I got a picture of him. I don't know where it is, but I mean, still the actor himself is right. still pretty well known. It's right. Like, it's kind of a big deal. Now, what's a country on your bucket list that you would like to go visit? Oh, that's a good question. Mm. Um, I'm a big soccer fan as well. So. Mm -hmm. I've always thought, you know, Italy would be really cool. Um, I've already been to England, but I would totally go back. Um, but I think Italy. I think I'd put Italy. Italy? Would yeah. you, uh, where'd you go in England? I was just in London. London? Okay. I act, I do have some family that lives in London. I'm not British, but I know they live there. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? I used to say, I think, invisibility. Okay. But then I think I saw someone say, like, the ability to control time or something like that. Hmm. Okay. And I thought that one, that one was a good answer. Like, time remapping maybe is the way to put it. I don't know. But I think time. that would be, be a time. really intense superpower, I think. Time remapping. Okay. That's uh, <laughs> <laughs> I remember uh, when I was in high school, they asked me the same question. And I played football in high school. And I said um, I would be the Flash because I would want to be fast. Yeah. And so I want that speed. And so in the yearbook, they put these, they put your answers yeah. and the genius put, I would be the flash because I'm fast. And I got, and of course that was going into my senior year. So yeah. I'll, I'll go into my senior year. I heard from my team. Oh, Ryan thinks he's so fast. I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> Gee, the idiot did not take it down <laughs> properly. So you clearly moved uh, on. So. I know, right? <laughs> In a zombie apocalypse, what would be your weapon of choice? Well, since like a zombie apocalypse may not necessarily be real, can I go with like a double-edged lightsaber? Absolutely. All right. I have, one. I, I have no problem. My, yeah, mine's. I mean, mine's sword, but yeah, that's just a fancier sword. <laughs> just yeah. a cooler sword. You just burn right through everything. So. I love it. Who's your favorite athlete growing up? This can be past or present. Just who's your favorite athlete? Um, I always like um, Leo Messi, being a soccer fan. Um, but ever since I saw, I saw Salvador Perez play. I think when I was eight, and ever since then, like I've always just loved Salvi. Like Salvi's just, he's been like a big reason why I'm a Royals fan in the first place. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. Following him since he was 18, I, like Salvi's like a guy that I love so much. So, so that was your guy. Now, this is probably going to be a very controversial question, and I just want you to really think about this last one. Uh -oh. Does pineapple belong on pizza? Yes. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I have, it's not controversial for me. I, I love it. I think it's so good. Some people think the otherwise. I I've here's the thing. I've never tried it, so I don't really have an opinion on how it tastes. Yeah. Um, like I remember when like my mom would order it, and like I had to pick off the pineapple, so I never like, but I could taste the sweetness from the pineapple on yeah. the pizza. So I was kind of like, it's fine. I ate the pizza, but yeah. I don't think I got the full experience. So I, I should try it one day. I don't have an, I don't have a valid opinion, but yeah. I always see the debate online. I think. I mean. The best way to have it is if you go just order Hawaiian, just order and Hawaiian. have like the Canadian bacon, um, the pineapple, and then if you get some cilantro on there too, oh, it can be so good. Cilantro as well, okay. Because every time I had it, it was always just ham and pineapple. I think, but... I think it's definitely better if you get it like on a thin crust though. I'll remember that. With my personal take. Oh. I'll remember that when I try that, whenever that day comes. <laughs> Again, Kellen, um, I wanna, that's that's it, man. I, I 
thank you for doing this, man. This was this is great. Um, loved learning about the Smokies. And if there's anything else you want to add about the Smokies, please, by all means. Thanks for having me. Um, I mean, you guys can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. Um, we look forward to you know keep posting more fun content. Um, we have a lot of you know top prospects here from the Cubs this season, so. There's a lot of there's a lot of fun footage that's um, being put out there and a lot of fun things that are happening. Um, I think you've probably seen like the recent videos of Pete Crow Armstrong, um, but we've also got you know Jordan Wicks is also a top prospect for the Cubs and he threw five no hit innings last week. Um, Southern League Player of the Week, Luis Vasquez was Southern League Player of the Week week before that. So um, it's a really exciting time to you know hop on our hop on our bandwagon if you want you know the smokies we're looking to grow um and we're excited for the future so man i'm excited for the future guys too like i said i'm you're you're actually the first interview i'm doing when it comes to the minor league baseball yeah. uh track that i'm on and I'm, I'm wanting to do and um i'm really excited to continue to build more awareness for minor league baseball because i think everything that you touched on is such a big factor when it comes to minor league baseball so thank you again for taking time i truly appreciate it kellen Thanks, Ryan. It was, it was a lot of fun. Thanks for having awesome. me. Awesome. Of course.